I don't like it. It didn't taste. It didn't taste. Um. It didn't taste. Um. Nothing. Hmm. Hi, everybody. Can you wave? Ready? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, we're just going to wait a minute um, for a couple more of our friends to join on. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just go. Can you guys hear me? Hey, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. So our microphone's a little off. Yeah. All right. So um, good afternoon or good morning. For some of you, it's probably around lunchtime, right? Um, here in Florida, it's around three o'clock. So we've already had breakfast and we've had lunch um, and now it's getting really hot. So um, all of our kids are kind of inside and doing some fun things inside. Um, what are some things that you guys have been doing when you guys are in your houses? I know I've seen lots of pictures of kiddos painting rocks and painting like murals on the sidewalk with chalk. That's a lot of fun. Um, my kids have been playing and bouncing on the trampoline a lot and they have been doing homework. So luckily you guys don't have to do a lot of homework because you get to listen to me and learn some things here. So parents, if you're just joining on, um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Karen Green. I own a school in Tampa, Florida called The Reading Corner. I also write curriculum. So we wanted to open up this um, opportunity for your kiddos to um, be able to engage in our curriculum um, as, as our kiddos are as well. Um, we will be extending this through the summer. So if you want to have access to the curriculum that we are using, go to readingcorneronline.com. We have a really great package right now. For 200, you get um, access to the, the website. You get the last, you get next week's spring activities, the last four weeks of curriculum, our game bundle on cardstock, and our summer workbook. So it comes out to about $10 a week um, to educate your kiddos. So how many of you guys are going to kindergarten next year? Raise your hand. Yeah, so if you're going to kindergarten next year, this is a really um, important time to make sure that we're getting a lot of skills and um, really just giving exposure to things that they're going to be, um, you know, finalizing and learning more um, so solidly in kindergarten. So I really recommend you take advantage of that bundle. We'd love to see you guys on all the time. Um, the only thing we ask of you um, from getting on this free class is that it, you just give us a shout out on Instagram or your Facebook. Um, make sure you tag Reading Corner online and feel free to um, uh, um, share this with anybody that you think it could be a benefit to. So let's get started. 
If you do not watch our after our morning classes, we do here in Tampa, we do another VPK kindergarten class around 1130. So feel free to go on our YouTube and look at them, watch those ones on like Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I try to do different things in both of them so the kids aren't seeing the same thing. So in this, the morning class, I did a literacy story and a morning message. So in this one, I want to play some different games so that your kids are going to be exposed to different things. So can you guys tell what these are? It's popcorn. Yeah, so we play a lot of fun games um, with our curriculum. And this is just a popcorn game. So the way we like to play this is when we find the word that we like, we just say pop. If you go into our, um, if you want access to the bigger piece, pieces, um, go into my stories on Reading Corner and you can see where they are. I made them bigger. Um, so first of all, your kids could see them a little bit better. But what I like to do, guys, is I like to cut these up and I like to put them all over the walls um, in the classroom and the kids have to run around and pop them before other kids get to them, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna practice these words. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit so you guys can see it. You see those words? Okay, the first word I want you to find is the word W-E-N-T. So we kind of clap it. It goes W-E-N-T. Can you do that? W-E-N-T. Do you see this word? on our popcorn bowl, you can point to it. Awesome, okay, great. The next word, and guys, do you remember that we talked about trickster words? What are trickster words? They're words that like to trick us, right? So what they do is they pretend that they're other things. So today, our trickster words are acting like they're popcorn. Remember last week they acted like they were bubble gum? So they don't think that we can see the words on them. They just think they're being covered by a piece of popcorn, but we can really see that. So they're still trickster words, but they're being even trickier because they're trying to disguise themselves. You guys know what this word is. What is this word? This is L-I-T-T-L-E little. Say that, L-I-T-T-L-E little. Can you see the word little? hiding in a piece of popcorn, point to it. There it is, good job. All right, oh, this one's kind of a double tricky word because it has one of those funny phonograms in it. Do you remember the, phon the phonogram that says R? And remember, when we see a funny phonogram, we underline it. So if you notice, I underline the A-R, and when I say this word, I go R. Can you say that? Go R. Can you see the funny phonogram, the silly trickster word R hiding on a piece of popcorn? Point to it. All right, great job. Do you know what this word is? So this word says M-Y, my. Do you see that one hiding on a piece of popcorn? They think they're tricking us because they're disguised as popcorn, but they're not tricking us because these words can't trick us. Where's that word? M, Y, my. There it is. Oh, this one is one of the easiest ones now. Do you know what this word says? This one says, T-H-E says the. Can you say that? T-H-E says the. Can you point to it? Do you remember that there is a funny phonogram in this word? I'm gonna underline it. So you see, when we underline our phonograms, they can't hide in words anymore, right? This one's so easy. This is the word, ah. Uh. Do you see the word ah uh, hiding on a popcorn? Point to it. There it is. And the reason I keep that one, do you know why this one tricks us, you guys? It doesn't necessarily trick us when we read it. It tricks us when we have to write it. And we're gonna practice that one, because remember we start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. This is another one that has one of those funny phonograms hiding in it, so I'm gonna underline it. And the way we do this one, because that O-R says or. So when we write, read this word, it says, or, what's that word? 
or four. Do you see the trickster word for hiding on a piece of popcorn? Where is it? Is this it? No. Is this it? No. Is this it? That's it. Good job. It's not tricking us today. This is the word am. Am. Do you see that word am? I'm going to tell you why this one tricks you guys. The reason this one tricks you is when you go to write it, sometimes you mix up the letters and you put M-A instead of A-M. So it can trick us when we write it too. Do you see this word am hiding on a popcorn? I see it. Okay. This one is one you guys know. It says Y-O-U says you. Can you find the word Y-O-U says you hiding on a phonogram or a popcorn? There it is. Okay. Oh, this one is so hard. This is the word said. And this one, I'm going to tell you, in my classroom, this one stays in the trickster party for quite a while because it's just such a hard word to spell. It's such a hard word to write. It's got that really hard letter A. So he gets to stay at the trickster party for a long time. Do you see the word said hiding on our popcorn? Yeah, I think he's gonna be staying around a lot. He likes to trick us. So what we're gonna do now is I have some sentences, but there's a problem with these sentences and I, I need your guys' help. The sentences have missing trickster words. Yeah, the trickster words popped off, popped off because they were popcorn and they just popped off the pages and they are missing. So you going to be able to help me fix these, okay? So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you two options when we get to our sentences. Do you see? Look, you guys, the trickster words popped off of our sentences. So I need help putting them back on. Do you think you could help me? So one of the things that good readers do is they skip words to try to, like when they're reading a sentence, if they come to an unknown word, meaning a word they don't know, good readers, guys, they actually skip the word, keep reading, and then they go and read the sentence again. And usually when they skip the word and keep reading, by the time they come back, they'll understand it. So let me show you what I mean. I saw a bird. Hmm. Do you see how I skipped that spot that there should be a word? I saw a what word do you think would make sense in there? Let's find out. I've got all these words. Okay, I'm gonna give you two options. I could either put, I saw a said bird. I saw a L-I-T-T-L-E little bird. Let's read that. I saw a said bird or I saw a little bird? Which one makes sense? If you said little, you're right. And so we got to stick it back on there. Do you see how these sight words just popped off? Man, they are sure tricky. Can you read that sentence with me again? I saw a little bird. Okay, good job. Let's try the next one. I love you. She Hmm. I'm going to give you two options. You ready? I love you, she am, or I love you, she said. Which one makes sense? I love you, she said. And do you remember we talked about this one, you guys? This is a super tricky one. It's going to stay in there in that trickster party for a long time. And if you don't know what the trickster party is, if you go to our first 
class that we did for our three o'clock class, it was last Tuesday. I talk about trickster words and how they have to have, they like to have a trickster party. Um, and you can figure out what trickster words are. But basically trickster words are words that try to trick us. They're sight words. We call them trickster words in my classroom. And they're always trying to be disguised as something. Like today they're disguised as popcorn. Okay, let's see. That one's not gonna work. How old you? How old, what do you think would make sense there? How old you, you? That makes sense, right? How old you, you? No. What about this? How old, what's this word? Are. How old are you? Does that make sense? Can you guys put your fingers up and show me how old you are? I'm like, I would have to put my fingers up for a long time to show you how old I am. How old are you? Oh my gosh, you guys. Thank you for helping me. I was so worried because I wanted to show you these sentences, but when I got in my classroom and I got ready to start this video with you, I saw that so many of the words had popped off and I was like, what am I gonna do? And then I realized that you guys could help me. So I'm so glad you're with me. Okay, let's keep reading. I can not find bite. I cannot find, let's see, I cannot find, oh look, they're popping down here too. I cannot find went bike. I cannot find for bike. I cannot find M. Y says my. Let's see if that makes sense. I can not find my bike. Does that make sense? It does. Great job. A couple more. We gotta stick them on really hard so they can't pop off, right? Okay. He blank on a run. What do you think would work? He four on a run? He went on a run? or he the on a run. Which one would make sense? So now we have to use our listening skills because I'm showing you the three different sounds that we're using. He went on a run. Do you guys remember what we do when we say went? What's the clap that we do? We say W-E-N-T. Can you do that? W-E-N-T. Yay, good job. All right, he went on a run. These tricksters, they're not tricking anymore, are they? Let's go ahead and keep reading. Oh, this is such a big word, you guys. This is another one that stays in the trickster party most of the year because it's kind of a hard word. It says, what? What do you want lunch? What would make sense? What do you want for lunch? Which of these two words says four? Which of those says four? Yep, you're right. This one says four. Oh, okay. We only have two popcorns left and one sentence. Ready? I blank a little sad. Hmm. I you a little sad or I am a little sad. Which one do you think it is? Yeah, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Now that we have our sentences back, I'm just gonna read one, and then I want you to read it along with me now that we have it done. So I say, that's how we're gonna do it. It's gonna say, I say, and I'm gonna read it, and then you say, okay? You guys ready? Sit up nice and tall. I say, I saw a little bird. Now you read it. Good. Okay, my turn. I love you, she said. Now you read it. Awesome. How old are you? Now you read it. 
Great. My turn. I cannot find my bike. Now you read it. Awesome. He went on a run. Now you read it. Okay, this one's a really long sentence. You gotta listen so you can read it. We're practicing listening skills today too. You ready? My turn. What do you want for lunch? Can you read it? Awesome. Okay, last one, listen. I am a little sad. Can you read that word? Awesome. Now I see the word sad and I notice that it's a three letter word. It says sad. We've been practicing those three letter words for the last week or two. We've been practicing making words with them. We've practiced the gumball. I've got a kind of fun game today. And what I wanted to show you is it's the same activity we did last week, but every week I try to show you a different way of doing the activity so that you can practice the activities different ways. So if you have the kindergarten curriculum, remember you can go to our website, readingcorneronline.com, and you can print it so your kiddos have the activities to do along with us, um, or you can just practice it with me. So I've got all these gumdrops. I think this is actually called CVC gumdrops. And I've got all these words. And the gumdrops need their words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the word, then I'm going to sound out the word, and then you're going to say the word, and we're going to find the word. We're going to go really fast with this, okay? What word is this? This word is am. Mm. What word is that? Ham. Do you see a picture of a ham? i kind of bring it closer to you guys. It's kind of hard to see. Yep. I think I could just stick it right next to it, you guys. Maybe not. Play like, okay. I use really fun font for this, so it's kind of hard to read. Do you see that word? This word is rag. What's that word? Rag. Do you see a picture of a rag? A rag is like something you clean the kitchen with. It's way down here, you guys, so far down here. Okay, next word. What is this word? This word, listen to the sounds, is v, an, n. What's that word? Van, do you see a van? Here it is. What's this word? Okay, this word is k, a. What's that word? Cap. Do you see a picture of a cap? It's like a hat. Where is it? Point to it. Yep, here it is. Let's see if we can get those to stay. Okay, what's this word? Here's the sound. W -a -x. Wax. Do you see the picture of wax? Wax is what comes off of a candle when it's burning. Do you see a candle with wax on it? Look carefully. There it is. Oh, here's that word we just talked about. Sad. Sad. Do you see a picture of a little girl that looks sad? Point to it. Here it is. This is a hard word. Try to sound it out. This word is sap. Sap. Do you know what sap is? Sap is what comes out of a tree to make honey. Can you find a tree? Do you see it's really hard, but there's a tree and the tree has sap in it. That's that sticky stuff. Sometimes when you take some of the bark off, and your hands kind of get sticky, that's the sap. Okay, look at this one. Listen to my sounds. T-a-b. T. 
tab. A tab is what's on the top of like a soda can. Do you see a soda can that has a tab on it? Way up here. We're gonna stick it on there. What's this word? Listen to my sounds. And, mm, fan. Do you see a picture of a fan? We don't have any options left. There's the fan. Oh, they're all falling down. What's this word? Listen, d, a, d, dad. Do you see a picture of two of the kids with their dad? Point to it. Awesome. All right, what time is it? Is Kim on? All right, so guess what? We are done with some of our literacy stuff. We're gonna move over to Miss Kim and we're gonna do some of our math and then you're gonna come back to me and we're gonna do our handwriting and writer's workshop. So get some paper ready. Um, and if you are following along, um, she's gonna do the number of the day. In our preschool curriculum, there is a sheet um, that has it. If you, she does this every day. So if you want a copy of that sheet, message me on Reading Corner online and I can just email you that sheet because we're gonna, we use it this morning in our VBA class and it was really neat to see the kids following along with them. But we're gonna move to Miss Kim. Everyone say good morning or good afternoon, Miss Kim. Can you wave to her? Hi, friends. Hi, I'm so happy to see you all today. Great, let's sing our quick hello song. Okay, here we go. Right, let me see. I'm trying to get in here. Great. Get situated. All right, here we go. Hello, friends. How are you? Hello, friends. And how do you do? Air high five. Hi, friends. I'm so happy to see you today. We are going to do some addition. Okay, we're going to do some addition today. Um, some things when you're doing addition, you might want to think about are how many in all? How many in all? Or how many all together? That's what we think about when we think about addition. All right, friends. I hope you all can see this very clear. All right, so I have some dots up here. I have, hmm, how many orange dots do I have? I have one, two, three orange dots. Okay. So I'm going to create a number sentence based on these colors. So I have three orange dots. And then I have how many purple dots? One, two. All right, so I'm gonna put my plus sign here and I'm gonna put in the number two to represent my two purple dots. Now I'm gonna put my equal sign, okay? Three orange dots plus, there's a plus sign, plus two purple dots equals how many dots in all? Let's count them all up and find out. That's what addition is. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Here we go. All right, let's go ahead and read the number sentence together. The number sentence that we created. Three plus two equals five. Well done, friends. All right, here we go. Now, I have some green dots up here, and then I have a pink dot up here, okay? How many green dots do I have? Let's count. One, two, three, four. There are four green dots. Four green dots plus, because I want to see how many green and pink dots there are in all. One pink dot equals, let's count how many green and pink all together. Here we go. Get your counting finger ready. Let me see your counting finger. That's right. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Four green dots plus one pink dot equals five dots in all. Oh, we're doing so great. Here we go, ready? We have two purple dots. Let's count just to be sure. Get that math 
finger ready, that math counting finger ready. One, two. Two purple dots plus, let's count how many pink dots we have. Here we go. One, two. I was thinking Nine. about all of the different scenarios. Purple. If, if everything is done by the end Andy? Of the Andy, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We're good? Okay, perfect. All right, I have two purple dots plus two pink dots equals how many dots in all? Let's get our counting fingers ready and count them. One, two, three, four. Two plus two equals four. All right, here we go. All right, we have one green dot plus how many orange dots? Let's count. One, two, three, four. Four orange dots equals how many green and orange dots all together? One, two, three, four, five. All right, you ready to read the number sentence with me? All right, one plus four equals five. We did it. We are mathematicians. We are addition mathematicians. We need to celebrate. Hmm. How are we going to celebrate? Let's celebrate with a roller coaster cheer. Okay, here we go. Let's put on our seatbelt. Click. All right, let's go up the hill. Down the hill. Woo! Nice job, friends. You did so great with your addition. I can't wait to see all the great work you do on your own today. All right, here we go. I'm going to flip around my easel because it's time for number of the day. All right, here we go. All right, I hope you can see it out there. We have a new background today. Uh-oh, we have stuff falling already. All right, let me fix this. Thank you for your patience, friends. This just doesn't want to stick today. Okay, all right, number of the day song, here we go. It's the number of the day, the number of the day. Hey, hey, what do you say? It's the number of the day. Woo! Nice job, friends. All right, here we go. Hmm. I need everybody to take their hands just like this and give me a drum roll because I'm going to announce the number of the day. Here we go. Drum roll. The number of the day is 11. That's right. The number of the day is 11. All right, here we go. Now, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use this fancy tool that mathematicians use, and it's called a, yes, it's called a 10 frame. Well done. We are going to count out these circles and put them in the 10 frame, okay? Well, today, our number is above the number 10. It's greater than the number 10. So we're gonna use two 10 frames, okay? We have to fill up one 10 frame first and then move on to the next one. Here we go. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Now remember, when we started the left here, we go across and then we're going to come down here. Okay. We have to fill up one whole 10 frame first. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, we filled up a whole 10 frame, but we're not at 11 yet. So we get to move on to the next 10 frame. Now remember, you always start up at the top of the 10 frame and you start on the far left hand side. 11. Wow. We're going to start a new concept today, too. Okay, here we go. So we are going to, we are going to, oh, yikes, everything is falling today. So sorry, friends. Okay, all right. So one 10 frame, which means the number 11 is made up of a 10, one 10, and then how many ones? One, one. The number 11 is made up of one 10, 
and one, one. This is the number 11. Well done, friends. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna tally the number 11. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, slash, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, slash, eleven. Now, when we do tallies, the beautiful thing about doing tallies is that you don't have to count up all those tallies one by one. When you see a bundle, that tells your brain that you can count by fives. All right, you ready to do that with me? Let's check and see if we have 11 tallies. All right, here we go. Five, 10, counting on by ones, 11. Well done. All right, here we go. Now, all of these dots here, that tells us we're going to count out the ordinal number for 11, and that is 11th, okay? All right, so when we do ordinal numbers, you're gonna start all the way at the left, the same way that you read, okay? Here we go. Um, we're gonna have to sing our song first. I totally forgot about my ordinal song. Who, oh, who is 11th in line? Oh, who, oh, who can it be? Who, oh, who is 11th in line? Let's count and we shall see. Here we go. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. Red is eleventh in line. Bravo, friends. All right. Now, we're going to come up to this tool. This does not want to stay today. My goodness. All right. Do you remember what this math tool is called? Yeah, that's right. It's a number line. Perfect. Now we're gonna circle our number of the day on our number line. Can you remind me what the number of the day is? 11, that's right. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna throw up some numbers here. Hmm, how about eight, 11, seven, six. I'm gonna ask you a very important question, okay? These numbers, here's our number of the day, 11, 8, 7, and 6. Which one is the least? The least is just a fancy word for smallest. Which one is the smallest or the number that is the least? Is it 6, 7, 8, or 11? 6, you're right. 6 is the least number of all of these numbers. Bravo. We're on a roll here. We're doing some great math. Now, what we're going to do is we have our number 11 on the number line. What's one more than 11? Okay. When you're, if you want to find out what one more is, it's just the next number. So jump up on the number line. One more is 11 plus 1 equals 12. One more than 11 is 12. All right, now we're gonna find our number of the day and we're gonna do one less. If you wanna find out what one less than 11 is, you're gonna jump backwards on the number line. All right, little froggy, jump backwards. Whoops. That's just the number before 11 and that is 10. That's just like saying 11 minus one equals 10. We did it. We are mathematicians, we did so great. We need to celebrate by Hmm, what year should we do? Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's do rock star. I like that one. Get your air guitar and go da, 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 rock star. You guys are awesome. All right. Thank you for doing math with me today. See you tomorrow. Bye. Gross. My, my sideways? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. You guys remember if you want a copy of that paper so you can follow along with Kim, um, you can go on our website, Reading Corner Online. It's $7.99 for the month. Or if you just want that piece, feel free to just email me, message me, um, and I can email it to you. We are going to start our handwriting and our writer's workshop. If I can find my pen. 
find me a pen real quick. It's over there. Okay, so this is your opportunity to have a paper and pencil. Parents, if you wanna put some lines on the paper, just so it's easier for them to make the paper, the, um, the letters. I always do, I do, and then I do it, and then you do it. So I, again, what I recommend is I'm gonna say I do, and I'm gonna do one. And then as your child's writing the letter, make sure that you're seeing that verbal formation with them. So we're gonna get started because I wanna get that in and it's writer's workshop before our class is over. Okay, ready? My turn. I do start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. You do, you try it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Let's do it again. I do start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. So notice my letters touch that line, they're not flying. You do start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Awesome. We're gonna try the letter H. I, and notice I do a lot of the same letters because we practice the, a lot of them until we master them. So notice my H is taller than my A, ready? I do straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump. You do straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump. Let's try it again. I do straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump. You do straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump. Okay, ready? We're gonna try our E. I do straight line up and around, touch the bottom line. You do straight, uh, straight line up and around, touch the bottom line. And if you don't have paper and you wanna do it in the air, that's a really great way of practicing your letters too. Ready? I do straight line up and around, touch the bottom line. You do straight line up and around, touch the bottom line. Okay, now remember this F. A lot of times you guys do the straight line, then you come up and make the hook, and then you do the dash. This is how we make our dash, or F, watch me. I do little hook down, come, touch the bottom line, come up and make a dash. You do little hook down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a dash. Okay, ready? I do little hook down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a dash. You do. Little hook down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a dash. All right, awesome. Let's try the letter G. The G is just like the A, you guys, except it's gonna go below the line. So a lot of times I see you guys make your Gs and it's got like this thing that comes out like that. It's so silly. This is how we make it. Start at two o'clock. Touch the bottom line, straight line past the bottom line, make your hook. You do it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down, make your hook. Okay, my turn again. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line past the bottom line, make your hook. Awesome. Okay, let's do two more letters. Let's do our M. Our M is just like our H, except that it's got a short line. It doesn't have this nice tall line. Watch. Short line down, come up and make a hump, come up and make a hump. I love making M's. I used to make them really sloppy. Let's try it. you two, all right? Short line down, come up and make a hump, come up and make a hump. Okay, my turn. Short line down, come up and make a hump, come up and make a hump. You try it. Short line down, come up and make a hump, come up and make a hump. Okay, let's try the letter B. So remember, when we go B, B, it makes a line with our mouth, which tells us that we make the line first. So it's just like an H, you guys, except for we're making that belly instead of a hump. Ready? Long, straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a circle. Or you can say belly. You try it. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a belly. That way you know it's a b, b belly. Ready? Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a belly. You try it. 
Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make the belly. All right, great. Now put your pencils down. We are gonna do writer's workshop. Um, parents, remember if you guys, um, if your kids work on something, please make sure that you put at the reading corner online. And the reason I'm saying that again is because we've had so many kiddos send us pictures of their writing and it's just awesome. So what are these over here? Yes, those are those trickster words. So I like to keep trickster words right where I can see them. So if I think of a trickster word while I'm writing, I can swipe it and then I don't have to write it. So I'm gonna practice that a little bit today. But first, just like everything, I put my name on my paper. First thing, it's me a little sloppy because it's kind of right there on that board. Now, I know what I'm gonna write about today because I have, you can't see it, but right outside of my office here, there is a little balcony and every morning when I get up, I open the door and all four of our cats run out on the balcony and they love sleeping on the balcony. So I kind of wanted to write about that. So I'm gonna draw a picture of it since you can't see it. Remember, we kind of talk about that quick sketch. So here I am, guys, look, this is me doing what I'm doing right now, I'm teaching. Here's my easel. That's what this thing is that I'm writing on. So this is the door. And there's two chairs out there. And you guys, there's like this column and a fence. And when my cat used to get on there, I would have my neighbors stop and be like, oh my gosh, your cats are gonna fall. Because you know what? They like walk across the little railing. But They've been there like two and a half years. They've never fallen. They're really, really good at balance. So I have one cat that likes to lay here. I have one cat that likes to lay here. I have one cat that likes to lay on the floor. And then I have one cat that likes to lay on that column. So I did my quick sketch. Afterwards, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put some more detail into my drawing. I'm also gonna label my words if I have time. Like I might write Lulu, Annie, no, those are my dogs. I might write August, Leo, Molly, and Grayson. But right now I really wanna to get to my writing. So I have to think about what I wanna say. And like I told you parents, a lot of times I'll have the kids tell me what they wanna say and I'll kind of put it into a sentence for them. So I think I might say, my cats like to sleep. You want me to say that? My cats like to sleep. I'm gonna clap it. My cats like to sleep. I'm gonna draw it. My, oh, that's a trickster word, so I gotta underline it. Cats like, oh, that's a trickster word, so I gotta circle it. To, oh, I ran out of room. What do I do if I run out of room? Do I turn the paper over and write the rest of the pe uh, sentence on the back? No, I slide around and I come back here. I'm gonna write the word sleep. And then I might leave it open because I might have time to write a little bit more. My, oh, I feel like I've seen that word somewhere that I could swipe it. Have you seen that word somewhere? Where? over here do you see the word m y my it's right at the top so this is what i do i look at it click i take a picture of it so now i have it in my head so i try to write it without looking at it m y my do you hear that it has a little jingle with the letters of it already in it m y my so that makes it easy m y my cats Cat. It's just like those CBC words that we were practicing in our activity day. Cat. K -k -k. At. There's that tricky letter. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Cat. And because there were more than one cat, there's four cats. I'm going to say four cats. What letter makes the s sound? Yep, the S. My cats like, oh, 
feel like that's a word I've seen before. <gasps> it's a trickster word. Where is it? Is this it? It's so close though. It starts with the same letter. This one is L-I-T-T-L-E. Can you find L-I-K-E, like? There it is. So again, I'm gonna take a picture, click, I'm gonna close my eyes. I see the picture of the word. Oh, and it's got a jingle that goes with it that says the letters of the word. L-I-K-E, like. Let me write it. L-I-K-E, like. My cats like two. What sound do you hear at the beginning of two? Ooh, that's an O. Sleep. Oh my goodness, that's so many letters. Let me sound it out. Ooh, E. Now we talked about that last week. Do you remember when I put two fingers together? We know it's going to be a two letter funny phonogram. S. Ooh, E L. Then what two letter phonogram says? E, you're right, E E. Straight line up and around, straight line up and around. My cats like to sleep. My dogs like to bark. Can you hear them? Sleep. So sometimes when I have time, I leave it open because I know a lot of my friends have things that they would like to finish. So I don't have time to finish my writing today. But what I do sometimes is I would like to finish this by saying, my cats like to sleep in the sun. I'm just going to finish it real quick. Eh, 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 eh. Mm, the. Do you see the word? T-H-E says the. And again, it has a jingle. I'm going to look at it, take a picture, click. Close your eyes. Do you see that word? And it's got that jingle. T-H-E says the. T-H-E. Sun. It's one of those three-letter words again. S-U-N. And what do I put at the end of a sentence? A period. So moms and dads, what I like to do is I like to ask permission to write the words underneath. So obviously a lot of times they just have it phonetically, but if I write the words really small underneath and I date it and I collect them all, you're gonna be surprised that if they do a little bit of handwriting and writer's workshop, maybe two or three times a week, they're gonna see, you're gonna see so much growth. But the nice thing is about writing the words underneath is like in two weeks, if you go back to it, you'll know what it wrote because a lot of times it's just phonetically. So you'll know what they wrote because you wrote them underneath. You guys did a great job. I know that was packed with so much stuff. You can read some literacy stories today. I'd love to see your writing. I'd love to see a picture of you guys doing um, our virtual class. Remember, just tag Reading Corner Online. If you want access to the curriculum, go to our website, Reading Corner Online. You can get access to it. Also a really great way of doing things outside of what we're doing in this class. So you guys did a great job. We'll see you tomorrow um, for the next day of class.